What's up, everybody? It's Mason. Uh, I, I bet you're all wondering why we've asked you here today, and it's to do a Battle Tome review for the new Lumineth Realm Lords, uh, courtesy of Games Workshop. Um, I did bring a new face uh, that some of you might not uh, recognize here, but <laughs> I, got, I got a guest here today to help talk about Lumineth. He knows a thing or two, so I thought, what a better fit than to have Jack. How you doing, buddy? Oh, nice to meet you. Good Jack meet from Rerolling you. One. Yeah, thanks, no, no. thanks for being here. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, he's took my took a he's a new leader. Yeah, yeah. I mean he's the best at AOS. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Bear. That's true. Um, How excited are you about this? The new Luna? I'm uh, really excited. I um, so last year was the first time I kind of played the maybe one of the top tier armies right in competitive. And at the same time as I'm playing competitive, I usually like tried to like play middle, mm -hmm. like uh, you know punch up. Right. Uh, but it was so much fun. <laughs> I, I could get used to it. Um, but as soon as I read the Stormcast book, I knew my days were numbered. Right. It was kind of like I was, I was like, you know, Guns N' Roses. And, <laughs> I was like Guns N' Roses or Poison and Nirvana just dropped. Yeah. And I knew I better start selling some tickets because <laughs> the whole game is about to change. Right. And uh, this book makes me feel like, you know, I'm ready to get back in there. Of course, the way I played, uh, which we'll probably get into, I don't know if it's the way I will continue to play, mm -hmm. but uh, we will talk about that. So stay tuned. So right. Actually, you know, stay tuned. Just keep watching the video. Yeah. Or, or skip forward to where I talk about it. Yeah. Oh, man. There, there might be time stamps. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, well, to dive right in here, um, you know, just talk about the Allegiance abilities a little bit. Not much has changed on the front of Allegiance abilities. They still have Aether Quartz. Mm -hmm. They still have Lightning Reflexes. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, they did modify um they did modify what you can use aether quartz for they simplified that a little bit so yeah. uh i'll touch on that in just a minute but um you know having absorbed allegiance abilities off the get-go you know or you know having absorbed allegiance abilities here jack what do you think are like your your takeaways there do you have to change much are you kind of you know approaching lists mm -hmm. with that in mind the same way um, they did uh, simplify it. I remember hearing a lot of complaints mm -hmm. about Olumineth, which is the options were oh my almost, you had it was analysis, an encyclopedia. paralysis. Like, you're like, and like, I'm, I was, I got good with them because I was like, well, I use six things. And <laughs> I can remember being at tournaments like, well, my six things aren't working. And I'd be flipping through the work. I need a seventh. I need a seventh. And so they did, like you mentioned with Aether Quartz, uh, they did drop one of the things I was, I'd use a lot, which was casting another spell. Mm -hmm. They dropped that one, um, which, you know, it, does there's less to do at the start of the hero phase because I could probably be like, oh man, I'm already past the start. Yeah, uh, weird timings yeah, yeah. with yeah. the old Aether Quartz mm -hmm. rules, and now they're just when they're gonna happen. Uh, well, what uh, one big thing they lost in religious ability, which is a good thing, uh, that I think we'll dive into deeper is uh, Shining Company is no longer uh, Shining Company is no longer an allegiance ability, it's on War Scrolls now, and they've also changed that, and it's just just so much easier to play the army you're so much more mobile uh, mobile than you used to be because you would like okay i can't run because then i'll have to lose shining company and uh, shining company is very important to me surviving this game right yeah another uh, uh key takeaway is um per the the uh another key takeaway per the wording in the book now your allies like go trek or the incarnate or sharks or what have you that you might bring in are no longer going to benefit from aether quartz or lightning reflexes yeah. they've added the specific keyword there um to to stop those shenanigans from happening so your your aether quartz incarnates are uh not long for this world okay yeah i know you're new to rerolling ones we don't use s words but everything else he said was fact <laughs> um yeah the and I, th I think that was kind of one of those uh, loopholes. You'll find them in the game. Like, hey, they didn't clarify this. So right. now my Gotrek or my, uh, excuse me, the people in the UK, Gotrek, my bad. Yeah. Or my Gotrek uh, is going to be able to use the Aether Quartz, which, you know, he, he hates elves. You know, there's no way he's going to do that. Right. How do you get lightning fast? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Though, right? Lightning reflexes, like we spoke about, is... Uh, a cool ability that Lumineth have had previously and they and they uh, retain now, which is when you pick uh, your unit to fight in the combat phase, you actually get to pick two units to fight. Mm -hmm. uh, the only caveat there is that the unit you pick cannot have the strike last ability. 
Uh, but really what it is is a double activation before your opponent gets to do one. So you pick two, then they'll get to retaliate. Mm -hmm. You get to pick another two, then they'll get to retaliate. So it uh, can be better than than abilities like smashing and bashing, so to speak, where if you if you took something out, you got to go yeah, again. Yeah, you had to. This um, is automatic. Yeah. You get this no matter what. Yeah, so you're not chaining you it together like you could with smashing and bashing, but it's guaranteed. Yeah, it's almost like a D3 where you might want to just have something that does two damage. Mm-hmm. Uh, rather than the max three because it's gambling like right. i can just not kill anything I'm right stuck with that one or to jump into like an advanced tactic what you could do is pick the battle tactic to have your general slay a unit which we currently have in in the general's handbook you could have a weaker unit go in and wound them have the general come in for that one two punch to get the tactic before they had a chance to do anything about it so you see that that's yeah. why he's the 2021 rookie of the year <laughs> that mind up there yeah so I even think about so that. lots of fun stuff you can do really techy they're going to remain techy as we kind of go through the book uh to talk about the aether courts now the changes we talked about how they're simplified a little bit um when they're when they're chosen to be the target of an attack you can choose to pop that aether courts to, to spend it you only get one right unless you have do some cheeky stuff uh you only get one you can spend it to have plus one save for that phase mm -hmm. so uh, in lieu of an all-out defense or in addition to you could have a bolstered save uh when they're picked to to fight either shooting or in melee you can pop that aether quartz to have plus one to hit mm -hmm. which is great again in lieu of or in addition to an all-out attack um the last one is when you go to cast a spell you can say that you'll have plus one to cast for that spell so you mentioned the getting rid of the additional spell and i think prior it was a re-roll right you could pop the aether quartz to re-roll yeah you could do uh pop you could re-roll it but you could also at the start of the hero phase you could choose to cast an additional spell mm -hmm. and i would use it on the lore seeker a lot because he's a one caster mm -hmm. but you know i'd send him out there able to cast you know two spells in the spell or something like that but. right the plus one to cast is nice um it's a little more streamlined but probably we could call it a net nerf mm -hmm. i think to aether court just less options yeah. means people will feel like less tools but way easier to absorb and to to really dive into so um all all bonuses there yeah because it's interesting in the book you, it gives you three options for your eighth courts but one of them has two different like like there's sub options mm -hmm. the plus one or the reroll but it's the same kind of heading right right uh Another kind of big change, if we're, you know, we want to rope it into allegiance abilities, is now when you're picking your great nation, you're not locked into command traits and artifacts, which is, I know was a trouble point. You're like, man, I would really would love to be Zytrek, but I yeah. do not want that artifact. So like all the other 3.0 books, they've gotten rid of that or they've streamlined it again. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of the name of the game with these 3.0 books to... To allow you more freedom and flexibility yeah. in army construction Indeed. uh and, and spoiler alert a lot of those artifacts and command traits did remain in the book so you have options to them if you really were loving the uh, alumnia uh command trait option that you had as an example uh, most of them are still an option just not a required option yeah and spells that were uh sub faction not locked are now available anyway. yeah uh moving on to the the command traits for lumineth um, they are still uh, keyword restricted a little bit there, mm -hmm. so you are going to have to pick and choose who is taking what when it comes to command traits. I'm not so in love with them that taking Teclas as your general or the Light of Altherian or something like that, those could still be a viable option, I think. Yeah, yeah because these are not... Uh, yeah. must takes yeah they're not game changing There's yeah little little things like oh huh, that's cute oh, okay. yeah uh one of them would let you on a on a venari for example you could re-roll a hit or a wound in a phase you know so it's it's helpful but it's nothing to write yeah. home about so yeah you've, you've got a lot of play with uh um with the command traits but you don't have to have them which i think is really cool um if you move into like the skinari options one that i really liked was you could have your skinari wizard pop that aether quartz for the plus one to cast without losing the aether quartz. Now it is only once per game, but getting a getting an additional plus one to cast at your command, uh, no pun intended, is uh, is pretty awesome. Uh, it's a pretty awesome trait. If you move into the Lords of Air, um, you know, or Goku as I like to call him, right? <laughs> um, he's got a fun one he can take that would be really good if you have a lot of uh, wind chargers or um, the Huracan. Uh, units where the range that they get the increased movement is increased drastically to 24 inches so, yeah, so it's, a, it's a huge aura range of your guys getting that 16 inch move which and, and hurricane is all about that speed uh, i know jack you were excited to talk about this one what was your takeaway for the uh stone people for okay. the Ametrica? yeah Ametrica, i took the stone mage as my general 
And uh, there is one, because I'm, you know, spoiler alert, that's a, I'm kind of moving into that mm-hmm, area for mm-hmm. my competitive right. uh, stuff. So there's one that really helps the Stone Guard, but I don't have any Stone Guard painting yet. So <laughs> I did play with them, and I played with El Valinor. The command trait I'm talking about is tectonically attuned. And so the uh, Spirit of the Mountains, El Valinor, and the normal ones, they have a shooting attack that is D6 damage. So at the <laughs> so at the start of the shooting phase, if the general is within range, what I believe is three inches, they'll get two attacks. So you know they're hitting. They have negative two range. I think it's D six damage. Yeah, D six damage. Uh-huh. And so you have two shots of where you're getting D six damage, and you know I love shooting. It's yeah. called the Jack phase for a reason. Uh, the one I think would probably be more competitive is the unyielding toughness command trait. So if you have a unit of Stone Guard within six in your hero phase, you select them, and they get plus one to wound. So I'm not sure. Um, so if anybody who's like familiar with Nurgle, they have the Fleshy Abundance spell. You know how dev, dev, not deadly, how devastating that can be when you're trying to chew through something and they go from two wounds each to three wounds each. And they're pretty beefy as well. They can like, we'll get into it, but they can get like negative, ignore negative two rend. Four up ward. Four up ward save yeah. against mortal wounds near an objective. Yeah. And just imagine, and it's not like, oh, on a, you know, I cast a spell to get plus one to, uh, to my wounds. No, no, you over there, you're tougher. Right, said right. So. And it's not once per game, which no. is awesome. Every hero phase, uh, in your hero yeah. phase, rather. Um, so, so you know, but until your next hero phase, so it, it works out to be that way. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. yeah, you just want to make sure you're picking the unit when it's your hero phase to to benefit from that. But yeah, if you had a unit of fifteen of those yeah. stone uh, stone hammer guys, uh, yeah, because they come in fives, and I think in Yemetrica is when they're battle line, and so in Yemetrica, Yeme- yeah, which we're gonna get to. In Yometrica, which we're going to get to the uh, allegiance abilities, well, sub-factions. we're going to get to the sub-factions, and yeah, they uh, that might be the way to go. But also, like, the wind charge one's really good, too. I don't know what to do. Tell I know, me, Mason. I know, it's tough. Tell me what to yeah. do. Yeah, um, so just kind of absorbing those command traits and the allegiance abilities that we have, just to kind of bring everyone up to speed thus far, it's really not uh, cut and dry yet where we want to go into. Uh, I think the War Scrolls are going to have a lot of power. I think we're going to talk about that here shortly, as well as the um, uh, sub-allegiances to pick. Uh, you still have six, the same six you had before. Some are going to remain the same, some changes, uh, yeah. but let's dive into those. Yeah, Yeah. okay, so jumping right into uh, Yometrica, like we just alluded to, we'll start with them just because they're a uh, hot topic here. Um, the Stone Guards and and the Emetrica uh, tribe in general, they have it on their War Scroll. If you have Rend 1, they make it Rend nil or Dash, right? Rend 0, mm-hmm. um, which is really helpful, but we're seeing a big influx in, in higher Rend. The Emetrica Great Nation remains how it was in the previous book, where that Rend 1 can now be Rend 2 to make it nil. Yeah. So what I mean is, if you have Rend 1 or Rend 2 against these Stone Guard, it's nothing. It's nil. So, like we said, that coupled with their new four-up ward on uh, objectives that was spoiled by Warhammer Community, um, you know, that's some serious beef right there with those yeah. cows. And then potential three wounds each, if you have the command trait, the two wounds each anyway. Uh-huh. Yeah, it is trying to chew through those things can be a chore, and just because usually you have high defense, but no more wounds. Either. Right. Now you're combining together. Right. And, uh, you know, like... And they're no slouch in combat. Yeah. The only thing you can see is, like, okay, they're slow. So they like, you know, spell in the right. Yeah, it's, it's still looming at the air, guys. They're they're going where they want. Yeah, you know, speed ish still thing. So uh, right, yeah, right, like, exactly. Uh, it, quickly, we'll go into um, Sayar, uh, another uh, great nation for Lumineth here. Uh, it's pretty similar. And again, we spoke about this. They did lose a lot of of bloat, you could call it, or a lot of requirements. But with that, it comes you know seemingly less stuff for taking the great nation, perhaps. So mm-hmm. just with a grain mm-hmm. of salt. All of these are going to feel less than what they were in a way. Yeah. Okay, so Sayar still allows you to take double Aether Quartz instead of a single Aether Quartz, mm-hmm. and that's the only that's the only thing, right? Yeah. Pretty similar to what it was prior, but again with less restrictions. I think they actually did have a pretty uh, strict um, artifact and command trait you had to take previously with Sayar. So having that double Aether Quartz can be really awesome. Having two instances of plus one save with no command plus points being necessary, hit, yeah. right? Yeah, plus one to hit. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, but still, it really really valuable. I know um, my buddy had practiced with with Sayar a lot to get those double Aether courts. I still beat him. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> uh, okay, um, Alithia remains similar to what it was. Basically, what it's saying is you can have two units 
per turn or per phase use the Aether Quartz. Yeah. So um, we talked about that Lightning Reflex having two units strike. I could pop a double Aether Quartz here and here and have two units get that plus one to hit against mm -hmm. the target I need to, again, without spending a command yeah. point. If I need two Wizards to have plus one to cast this turn, I have that option if I take this. Um, not my front runner of yeah. choices here with it's, this one, but but it is neat. It's interesting comparing, like, you know, Comparisons to Thief of Joy, mm -hmm. but comparing this to the old one, because the old one you had spin a command point, and you could have two units, you, you two units rally, two units uh, unleash hell. Right. It was like, uh, yeah. But so this, but you know, this is it's fun. okay. Yeah. Again, we streamlined a little bit. We took some stuff away. Not my front runner, but I, I, you know, I'm not here to uh, tell you what to do. So I'll speak about this one. Yeah, this right. Is, this was my. This is still really good. Right. Uh, it was really good back then. I think it might even be better now. But it did lose an uh, awesome uh, command. Uh, the command trait wasn't that great, but it was the item that was really good because I would run Teclas in Sidetrack. And so if you had the item, you had a four board save if Teclas was on the board. It was pretty nice leaving your Capillar and the tower all protected. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. um, so Zytrek, before uh, you got the first spell you cast or first unbind or dispel, you got a plus one. Now you just get a plus one on all of them oh, my goodness. every time. Yeah, it's you just so had good. a plus one constantly for every cast, every unbind, every dispel. And that is jamming because when we get to the spells, the spells have pretty high, high cost. Mm -hmm. Which you're like, ooh, but then you're like, good effects. High, yeah, if you have high cost, it's high for them to try to unbind. You. Right, right. And one thing that that's important to mention with those high costs, they a lot of the changes were built into the War Scrolls to let them auto cast something on a nine, similar to what Teclas does, right? So they have these needing sevens and eights and nines to get these spells off. Yeah. Because they have built-in ways yeah. once per game, they can auto cast. Deep thinker. It. Yeah, yeah, nice. exactly. So lots of fun stuff there. Zytrek big stonks up, I think, um, because like you said, instead of just that first cast getting plus one, all casts, all I can have my Enlightener take an Arcane Tome, and I'm plus three to cast on these. On a, a, it's, yeah, it's like everything's a uh, plan. Right, it's good. right. It's good. It's good. Uh, okay. uh, moving on to Alumnia uh, again, it might not be the best for them. Uh, what they do now is that your uh, Venari units, so your Wardens, your Sentinels, you know, your, your main players that you saw often, they're going to count as two on objectives instead of one. Yeah, okay. If, if they, they still have to be in Shining Company, they count as that, right? Yes. Yes, so I believe so. They have the base contact with two, and it's like they're little, uh, they're little expert conquerors. But, you know, these books, the, the, uh, the General's Handbooks are like temporary. Right. Expert conquerors ain't going to be here forever. But, well, neither will this. It'll yeah, be right. <laughs> this will be these are, much, these are much more evergreen <laughs> yes. than you would say yeah. than the uh, General's Handbook. So yeah. yeah, there might be some play with that if we see the Expert Conquerors go away. Mm -hmm. One kind of neat thing with this, though, is they don't have to be your battle line to benefit from that. That's so true. you could have your battle line in Expert Conquerors and maybe their non Venari units, and then your Venari guys are in there also counting as more. So your whole army is just bolstered on yeah. these objectives. Yeah, because you got like Dawn Riders, you got uh, blade ma uh, blade lords, mm -hmm. yeah, and the wardens and sentinels, right? And yeah, and and, and and you know, with with all the new changes and stuff, especially with expert conquerors and bounty hunters running around right now, you do want to like limit what is going to be battle line, so those bounty hunters aren't really getting you. Mm -hmm. So there is some fun play there, but I would say that is a little bit of a nerf, all I'm, things I'm considered. Still that trick. <laughs> right, right, yeah, um, but yeah, yeah. You know, uh, and then the last one actually that we'll talk about, uh, Helon. Um, big buff, I think. Yeah, so uh, Helon now says that you get plus one to your uh, ranged attack, to your missile weapons, if you're within six of an enemy. Okay, so that used to be within three, which yeah. meant you needed to be in combat, combat, right? So now what you can do is you can run these ward ignoring wind chargers up B6 away or 5.9 away, blast, blast them at the them. big attacks, yeah. right? And then, and then get out of dodge still. Yeah. So you're getting those extra attacks. Somebody else pointed out to me um, that. This will benefit from Unleash Hell. Oh, yeah. And Sentinels. Yeah. Sentinels very. It doesn't say, you know, specifically wind charger. Right. This. Sentinels, hey, Unleash Hell, like, charge into me. I'm getting two shots each. That's, you know, the mortal wounds coming at you. Mm -hmm. And um, they still have the increased rend when they're closer anyways sure. with Sentinels. So uh, just beefing up those attacks more. I think you will see this one. I think we're definitely going to see Elon, uh, wind charger, and Sentinel lists. So definitely look for that. Okay, I do have a question for you. Okay, sure. um, Now, when, I because I would do this before, uh -huh. and I know with the updated book, I'm curious, I can still do it. Right. When, it says when I, I can, when I shoot, 
I can burn Aether Quartz. Uh -huh. Can I burn the Aether Quartz still when I'm unleashing him? So I think yes, uh, because the Aether Quartz is when you're picked to shoot or fight. I do think that the wording on Unleash Hell is that you are shooting. And so I think you would be able to pop that and get that and, and negate that minus one to hit. Yes. Out so of sequence, so to speak. Getting the, still negating the hit and getting extra shots from Unleash Hell. Uh huh. Within I'm, six. This reminds me of Daughters of Cain. Yeah. Where I'm like, there's an embarrassment of riches. And I'm <laughs> like, what do I pick? Right. So many good I know. Things. Yeah. What happened when there was one battalion you took and you? Funneled everything into it. Right. Thank you, GW. Right. Shield, shield, shield. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. So, uh, again, I think it's worth mentioning here. Uh, big thanks to Games Workshop for letting us have this book so we can get this information to you. Hopefully, you guys like this um, sort of conversational style uh, introduction into this new book on release day. That's going to be our, our goal moving forward. Yeah. So, definitely please give us feedback, like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz right here. Um, and let us know how we can improve on this and what stuff maybe we didn't touch on that, that is your favorite or that you would want us to put emphasis on next time. I think it's worth mentioning mm -hmm. there. Um, overall, though, com coming back to, to focus here, um, the um, the great nations are good. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I definitely don't feel that that's a negative in this book at all. Again, there were some losers, but I think the winners just far outweigh what we've lost there. Mm -hmm. Um, I think you've got a lot of build options. I don't think anymore that it's the Sentinel show. Yes. You know, I don't think that they're bad, but I don't think that they are the must play jam 60 of these guys. Yeah, I don't list. think I'll be running 50 again. So before we jump into talking about some war scrolls a little bit, I think it would be okay to do a little bit of a postmortem on these yeah. spells that are lost. Yeah. So let's pour one out for <laughs> Lambent Light. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I guess it's a tough week. Coolio and Lambent Light. I, know. I don't know how we'll make it. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Lambent Light, you know, it was a very powerful spell. It was, yeah. You know, I, I, uh, I have a special place in my heart for you. And I will always have two, uh, 2021. Right, right. So. Uh, Lambent Light, for those of you who don't remember, allowed you to have full rerolls against a certain target. So you could, like, like Jack kind of alluded to earlier, get that lore seeker in the front line, have him cast the Lambent Light, have these 60 archers reining in, fishing for fives and sixes for those mortals, and you get a full reroll. It just like drastically yeah. increased the number of mortals that the Sentinels were doing to you. Um, and it was a lot of the the unfunness, I think, if that's a way to say that, right? It was fun for me. Right, for the, <laughs> for the <laughs> opponent, right? That, that We talk about NPE a little yeah. bit. It's a thing that gets thrown around. Yeah, negative um, play experience. Right, exactly. So I think Lambent Light did contribute to that. That and then not needing line of sight on your <laughs> archers coupled together was like, all right, this is a little yeah. overkill. Uh, so that is gone, which is a little unfortunate. Um, but I think that it's probably healthier, probably better uh, by and large. I think um, you just found the name of the uh, title, tagline, rest in peace. Right, like, right, exactly. 2020 to 2022. Yeah. This isn't clickbait, <laughs> we promise. Uh, Total Eclipse, though did stay i know we were talking about things that are gone but total eclipse staying and requiring you to have to spend two commands instead of one man is it so good i thought it was already their best spell and they maintained that i think it might have went up a point to cast is it a nine now um let me see here yeah. it is yeah uh it did go up a point to cast just to wrap up the spells you know th there's going to be a bunch for you to explore overall there are less spells for lumineth to have um by and large um, each great nation or each tribe, however you want to call it, has access to only three each um, with a kind of a more generic one going to five or six. So I think they went from like 30 spells total to something like 18 to 20. So they did lose quite a few. Oh, um, yeah. So, um, you, yeah. As Mason says, we lost some, we gave some. Mm -hmm. So the uh, wind lore and the uh, stone lore, the mountain lore, uh, they went from six to three. And the the spe uh, spells of the lore of hish was remained at uh, six yeah remained at six but lambent light had to be replaced and it was replaced by overwhelming heat one big loss was in the lore of high peaks it lost the bravery debuff mm, and so yeah. that was a big one for shutting down guardian because that was just a flat minus two yeah bravery, minus two right? during my turn minus one during your turn uh you were, you know you still have the permission spells on the uh -huh. Cathalar and in the uh the lore of high peaks but it is you're no longer in like hey, all right you have to pass a, day, a bravery debuff and you're minus two to your bravery. So mm -hmm. good luck with that guardian. Um, but now right. they're just like, oh, I'm coming for you. Right, right. Uh, the the uh, five up ward that they had access to, the protection of Heesh, that's still present. Uh, the teleport spell is still present. 
um, the bravery uh, check spells, the the lockdowns, uh, petrifies, I like to call them, those are still there. So you still have a lot of fun play. Tekla still has way too many options, uh, but but some less. Yeah. Big thing on the protection of his spell, which I don't know if they're going to FAQ. So mm -hmm. get, get in it while you can. Right. We right. have more allies. Uh -huh. We have allies of Stormcast, Daughters of Cain, like, so... Uh, protection of Hish just says friendly. Yeah. So you're going to have friendly allies. You know, you can have your allies with a five up ward for a while. Put that on tech list. That's a big, big base. Mm -hmm. That's a little, pretty forgiving. Right. And so, uh, and if you're in the, the tower, in the shrine, that's another big area to mm -hmm. get protection hits off. But as of right now, it affects your allies. Right. Um, and I think that was the case with protection of Hish in the current as well. I think that also did the, the five up ward for. The generic Hish one did did also hit allies as well, but like you alluded to, we do have access to more allies now. Okay, I like that I say we like yeah. I'm like I'm I'm a well, Illumina you, you player. You said you wanted to borrow, so. right? Right? Yeah, I'll play anything. Yeah. yeah, you send it. You know, I got it. Um, uh, you mentioned the uh the shrine, the the terrain piece. We could talk about that yeah. quickly. Um, pretty similar, similar to, to what it was. Did change a little bit. The the command once per turn was arguably way too powerful, and so now it's one per battle round, mm -hmm. so that's fine. Um, and then uh, it does allow a single reroll of a cast to somebody within 12. It might be wholly within 12, uh, but to somebody within 12, and then if it's garrisoned, that gets doubled. Yeah, 24. It's, yep. it's just for heroes, mm -hmm. and so I think that was like that before, because you're like, oh, I wish my Sentinels could reroll the right. yeah. power of fish, but they're not heroic enough. So, right. uh, yeah, similar. Yep. It did, like, you know, it's getting rid of the stuff that people were having issues with. Mm -hmm. It's not getting rid of them completely, but it's like, hey, yeah, yeah, you guys had a point. It may have been a scotch, a smidge too powerful. Yeah. I thought it was fine. Yeah. I don't want to put that out there. It still has some weird, wonky rules with, like, its size and what you can do underneath it and around it, right? Um, so you guys can still debate about all that stuff mm -hmm. if you want to. But overall, still powerful, but, but a little weaker than mm -hmm. where it sat previously. Um, which is a great segue, Jack, to talk about some War Scrolls, mm -hmm. okay? there Again, like with any new book, there are going to be obvious winners and losers. Um, I think, of course, we better start talking about Teclas, right? Teclas. And wait, hold on. I'm hearing something. I think we have a message from Tyrion. They must die. Deliver them to their ancestors. Wow, thanks for those wise words, Tyrion. What do you have to say about that, Jack? Tyrion, uh, well, Tyrion says he's coming back. Right. Well, so did my dad, so. Right. We'll, yeah. We'll see. Yeah, that didn't happen. All right, so. <laughs> oh, man, my heart. Hey, I, was, I can make fun of that. Not you. Uh, uh, get some more but, yeah, yeah, get back to the book. Yeah. Uh, we'd be uh, we'd be doing an injustice if we didn't start with Teclas, right? Mm. He is a polarizing figure in the Lumineth world. He does a lot of stuff. He's got that big Sphinx cat. Um, he's really awesome, actually. Uh, he did come down in points by 40, which mm -hmm. is really awesome. He did maintain that really awesome ability where he can choose to cast four spells on a 10, two on a 12, or one auto cast can't be unbound. Uh, so that was pretty key to what Teclas was, right? Mm -hmm. um, that did remain the same. He does still have the protection of Teclas, which can't be comboed with the protection of Heesh, but mm -hmm. it's that same five-up ward in a larger radius. Yeah, but only affects Lumineth. That one only affects Lumineth, yeah. So you definitely want to be playing close to mono Lumineth with him. Um, he did still maintain uh, the uh, the Teclas bomb, the, the mm -hmm. searing heat. Mm -hmm. uh, so you'll probably still see that pushed through yeah. spell portals at a game store near you. Um, yeah, he was very same. Yeah, pretty similar. Still going to unbind an auto unbind, uh, you know, which is disgusting to face against. Um, yeah, he, he's pretty. Yeah, I know he's pretty good. Um, his his shooting attack, uh, pretty similar. Still, just a single shot can hit really hard. You're really it's it's a hit or yeah. miss kind of a thing, right? Yeah. Uh, he still slaps pretty good in combat. Yeah. He's not one that you want to to lead the charge, but he's fine to be in the fray. Yeah, he, Selenar can still do some damage. He mm -hmm. still hits on the four. Uh, yep. Techless himself. Yeah. So it's like very, like not much change. Points went down, which is good. Yep. Um, something I want to bring up. Okay. A Valinor. Uh -huh. Stoneheart. King. Yes. That is, that right now, I've gotten three games in. Right. Him every time. Uh -huh. It's, he's beautifully painted. Thanks to paint Smithy Noah. Yep. Um, yep. That guy, he, he, he always did well before. But now he has two rend mm -hmm. and like just, all that big attack six yeah. six attacks with that main weapon yeah and seven if you charge if he doesn't move or right. like if he doesn't charge yep. so if you charge him or you're in combat for you won't be in combat past a turn right yeah he pressure. slaps yeah and so it's five it starts off at five damage like uh, also one thing um wait 
They bracketed pretty good before, right? I'm thinking of different things. They did have old bracketing, but you can you can talk about the bracketing. Because I think the bracketing might have improved on him. Probably so. Yeah. I would hate so a lot of these new books, they update the bracketing, how often stuff goes down. Um, he has two rend on his main attack. He used to just have one. He still ignores a rend of one, and he has that bubble of minus one to hit aura, which is just helps him keep uh, keeps him alive. Three up save. I'm sure you saw that leak. That was fake. He does not have two up save. I wish. Right. Um, he still gets to pick three units, uh, three stone units to get the buff that he gave out as well, which I was plus one attack. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Just like him having him inside the Unimetrica army, like he does have the Unimetrica keyword. So he wouldn't be able to use, like he can't cast spells anyway, but he wouldn't be able to get the buffs if he was in mm -hmm. another sub-faction. Um, but I do think, like he, you're going to see him a lot more on the tables. Um, he still has the thing, if the Stone Mage is near him within 12, he still gets to fight at top bracket. Yep. So even if big, he... Big stocks yeah, there. Even if you are getting hurt, like in like t uh, taking that... You know, I probably would still take the command trait where I'm buffing the stone guard if uh, I was taking the competitive list. Yep. But I had, like, this guy had a cheerleader on my games. We're just running around, ah, you're the best, and you get to shoot twice. Right. It was pretty fun. Right, uh, yeah. So he is, uh, he's definitely, if I'm not going to take Techless as a centerpiece, I'll probably take him. Yeah, and, and at just shy of half the cost, right, he's just a little over 400 to take um, um, a Velnor. A Velnor? Uh, just to take him now is so much more valuable for that additional rend. I've played lots of games against him with the old book, and I, every time I'm like, "Why are people playing this? He's so powerful <laughs> in the game. He's just he 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 asks so many questions that are tough for you to answer as the opponent." And so now, just to get that additional rend, I think he only went up by 25 points, if I recall. But it, it's super worth 25 points for that additional pip of rend. Kind of quickly to go through some some guys that that recently got some updates. Right, the lore seeker is a big one to call out. I think. Before, he could start the game in reserve, be anywhere outside of three not in your territory, and take an objective, and it was his until he left or you killed him, right? Yeah. That's been kind of changed a bit to be more in line with how we're seeing multiple bodies on objectives. Mm -hmm. So now that same circumstance can happen, except for he counts as 10 on yeah. that objective instead of auto-taking it. Uh, so a little bit of a nerf there, but but it makes more sense. Yeah, and in the game of unique, not unique, unique, not unique that he's gone through, he is not unique again, so you can't get a command trait and item. Like I suggest uh, giving him Silver Wand, which is a pretty nice item for Escanari, where you can get another cast. Um, so yeah, I still think he's good. And hey, run six. Right, <laughs> whatever, you know. Yeah, let's go, uh, let's go with uh, the foxes. Oh, okay. So the foxes have changed a little bit. This was a big uh, MPE unit. Mm -hmm. Um, they switched it so, because as before, you could move in both players' shooting phase. At the end of each shooting phase, you would be able to run shoot, away. So, and, yeah. and now it's just your shooting phase. So it's like you can actually get a hold of them and strangle them. Like, right, exactly. Like, uh, as before, yeah, it was just like... Now, if you recall, they were FAQ'd or, or battle scrolled, whatever you want to call it, to have the leader... Uh, battlefield role added in so they, they they did retain that now in the new book so they are still a leader on your slot which was kind of a big nerf because now you can't take four of those and four little heroes mm -hmm. or what have you right so um that was tough to them because they're not heroes but they are leaders I, I i was trying to think if there was another instance where we have I that see the reverse right like where you're right. not a yeah like a grimrath hero. berserker yeah. is a hero and not a leader but these guys are leaders and not heroes it's really bizarre but it makes sense mm -hmm. i think um they did go down in points they're only 250 points now and the rest of their stuff is pretty identical yeah so yeah still you'll still see them but mm -hmm. you won't you know, people won't be sad to play you. <laughs> right, exactly. And and that uh, that that change or nerf does also carry over to Severoth as well. Both are, are no longer moving in the enemy hero phase. Shout um, out to Final Fantasy VII. Right, yeah. Uh, another big thing to change, uh, another big change to talk about, I think, here, Jack, is the Sentinels. Um, so they no longer have a 30-inch range base, which is yep. a pretty big deal. They have 24, which matches the FOMO box uh, that they recently got adjusted to. However, they've got a built-in War Scroll ability now that if they're near a Ballista or another unit of Sentinels, they get that 6-inch bump back to 30. Yeah, there's like a yeah. symbiotic relationship where they exactly each other. Yeah. Um, and there's a, few, there's a lot of like synergy buffs. Mm -hmm. So if you play Total War 3, it came out, the uh, Cafe and Army, there's a lot of, it reminds me of that, there's like a, a yin yang kind of thing where you buff here if you're near each other and exactly kind of yeah thing. and the wardens still allow you to take a unit of sentinels as battle line for every warden unit that you have so you can bolster them up to 30 with the reinforcement points however you likely won't see a full power 
30 grip of sentinels by themselves yes yeah yes. they're gonna want shooting firepower to buckle or you know to to coast um they're gonna want shooting firepower to join them on the battlefield which actually is really flavorful because the whole thing with lumineth is that they're they're in force right mm -hmm. it wasn't a single archer unit devastating it was blocking out the sky with arrows yeah you know what i mean so um that's really cool uh we mentioned the ballista so i'll just yeah, say yeah. it briefly Go right to the ballista. yeah um it, the extra shot that it used to get for not moving is just base. They yeah. just get three shots now, okay? They get a ward if they don't move now. Yeah. Um, I think they had the ward and, and the additional yeah. shot, and now it's just the ward for sitting still. Um, however, if it goes into a monster, it's flat three yeah. damage instead of the D3 yeah. damage, which is a nice little buff. So, so, and like, so it's going to be nine damage max. And using that to transition into, like, because like I had Ballista, like, but you never saw him in the field. Mm -hmm. It reminds me, so we're going to go into the battle tactic. There is a battle tactic specifically for Ballista. So if you have one in your army, that's the only way to get it. Okay. Yep. And so uh, that one is you have to kill a monster like with the Ballista. You, know, mm -hmm. you can pepper it with something, get it down, and right. finish it off with the Ballista. Right. Uh, yeah, and I think the condition on that one was it like had to be a monster and 10 or more wounds and unwounded i think it is oh, it, yeah okay. it is it is a pretty tricky one yeah. however like you alluded to you need the ballista to to do the killing blow to get that battle tactic mm -hmm. um so yeah you know were there any other uh war scrolls you thought we should we should touch on here quickly before we uh, finish up with battle tactics and grant i know it's always a touchy subject yeah. so we'll wrap it up with yeah, that like uh so we we talked about the hammer guys how uh -huh. they're good the, yep. uh, the horse i mean the wind riders mm -hmm. they're good um like Dawn Riders pretty much stay the same. Yeah. Um, oh, the Light of Altherian, uh, big, big buff up. He's got Ren 3, 3 damage attacks now. He still has all of the other really cool stuff that he had before. He's still Ethereal on a 3-up save. He did get plus 1 health, plus 1 wound, which was really awesome. So he went from 7 to 8 wounds. So he's still in that little hero um, bracket and he didn't actually go up by many points yeah he's, uh, very, very he's really mm -hmm. slappy I, I i definitely think you're going to want to look at playing the light of altherian um but yeah i don't think there's too many other changes um the banner blade guy went down by 20 points so he's back at 100 which is sweet i think he kind of started near there and he does give like an 18 inch uh reroll charge re charge yeah, yeah. And I, that could be really nice with your running like guys who are slow like mm -hmm. stone guard and stuff like that and that once per game D three mortal wounds to everybody within his range. Yep, and yep. like you know, he's not unique. It's like maybe a couple of those. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Do the old like uh, stormcast <laughs> horn blower yeah. guy. Yeah, that would be fun. Um, so yeah, uh, we'll be right back and we'll talk about uh, battle tactics, battle tactics and, and grand strats. strats. Yeah, yeah, and then um, we'll do our final thoughts. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so jumping back in here uh, with the grand strategies at first, um, it, you know. Uh, First thoughts, they're not like the Zneech ones we just saw, right? They are, they are not gimmies in, mm -hmm. in the um, grand strategies here for Lumineth. So hopefully uh, with all their tools, they'll be able to really lean into General's Handbook ones that come yeah. in the future. But um, they are flavorful. We talked about that. Um, Definitely. It's like more narrative. Like, yeah, more narrative. Yeah. So uh, like, it's not impossible, but but definitely not the, the gimmies that we have seen in some of these books, right? Um, to talk about the battle tactics some gimmies in there yeah there are some <laughs> gimmies in there and so uh you know to kind of uh, revisit the ballista one we talked about it does have to be a monster but i was slightly incorrect on the on the 10 wounds and, and full health i was mixing up the stormcast ones because those cannot be easy because it's stormcast so uh, <laughs> but but for but for the ballistas right all you have to do is get the killing blow on a monster and they get that the the flat three damage and the extra shot so those are looking really, really cute to take. At least a single one to buff your Sentinels, right? I paid him by that. Right. You're probably going to see it in the battle before that. You know, you either... It's, yeah. You've watched it now or you're about you're to. About to. <laughs> right. Okay. To continue on with the battle tactics, uh, they do have a another kind of a gimme, like we had just alluded to. Um, if four different wizards in the army cast a spell, you get the battle tactic. Yeah. And you're still looking at an army full of casters. <laughs> yeah. Your sentinels, your wardens, all of your Dawn heroes, Riders, basically. Yeah, yeah, everybody's like... casting spells. So as long as four go off, and you don't even have to pick the four. You yeah. just need four to happen. Yeah, you've got it, right? Mm -hmm. They've got another one that just says, hey, at the end of this battle, if you have two endless spells, you got it. So okay? It, it reminds um, me, like, of, like so, Daughters of Cain. Like, there are, there are a lot of parallels, I think. Um, so there are things that 
in the Daughter of Cain battle tactics, you just have to pay a tax to get it. Mm -hmm. Like, so you'll just have to buy two Lunar Spells. Right. And their Lunar Spells currently are amazing. Right. So this is like, oh. Cogs is like a no-brainer. Yes, yes. Right? So just make sure the other ones are happening. Um, we, we're not going to touch on it in this video, but the Lumineth ones point-wise did stay the same. Um, so definitely explore those. They did have some fun options. The Rune of Petrification is the same. The, uh, it's dealing damage in twice a phase at yeah. the beginning and end of movement. So um, lots of good options there mm -hmm. with those. And like, because I like that one because you like if you cast it on your turn, you're going to get a minimum three shots at their guys. Yep. And there's like, and again, it doesn't affect Lumineth, so. It's a it's it's over there painted in the corner. You probably like it's in the battle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe we'll get some B roll. <laughs> yeah. Um. So to kind of wrap up the battle tactics, there are a couple others that have you have you pick a unit that still has an Aether Quartz and then another enemy unit, and then it's that enemy unit is not there, and you still have your Aether Quartz. And then there's another one that says that enemy unit's not there, and you spent the Aether Quartz. So kind of like a like an opposite thing there. So they're less easy yeah, but they've got <laughs> six total to choose from i mean and and they're then you got the other you know, yeah six battle tactics. yeah so um they're going to be doing okay on battle tactics i think uh, again the grand strategy is probably not my favorite piece of the book um but but please explore them and then the battle tactics some really obvious ones that are like yeah. gimmies and then some that you that you can build around and really like live in this book so it's kind of fun that, that you can do it that way yeah, and, um, I, and i do like like it there the grand strategies aren't that are kind of hard to get yeah these ones are easy so there's like there's that balance that yeah way. it is a hot topic in like the competitive community whether or not we should be using grand strategies and battle tactics from the book or not yeah right and and you know they're in the book GW has given them to us. We play with them. Most of the time we play with them, right? Yeah. So uh, it's the world we live in. So until GW says otherwise, continue to practice and build around these, I think, is the <laughs> way to go. Yeah. Um, so, you know, Jack, I think we've gone through a good amount of the book here. Yeah. Obviously, we didn't uh, bore yeah. the audience. Yeah, we're not going to go through. Yeah, two hours of everything. What are, like, your, your top three takeaways from this? Um, I enjoy that there's uh, different higher level ways to play mm -hmm. so you're not seeing the same thing yeah i think it was foxes and kind of and the shooty sentinels. boys yeah yeah um i do like that i like that it definitely remain i like the synergy stuff mm -hmm. like the uh, symbiosis and whatnot sorry i like the uh, symbiotic relationships between units mm -hmm. i think it's really cool and i love that i can dust off my beautifully painted by the paint smithy noah i uh, i can these guys they're amazing looking but you know i just kind of they were an interesting army for me because, you know, we were only once at the time when I had this army was just me, Shu, and Brent. Mm -hmm. And, like, I didn't want to play this army against them because... It, it was just, so powerful. Yeah, it was hard to take your foot off the gas. Right. So, like, you would just have to choose to pay poorly. All right, I'm right. not going to cast Lambda Light. Yeah. And uh, and so now this one... And then, you know, Stormcast came. Uh -huh. And I was like, okay, let me... Uh, get yeah, I like switch Stormcast. gears. I was shoot cast, man. Yeah, I get back to it. Right. Black Stormcast is my bottom. Right. Uh, I almost said the B word. But yeah. <laughs> Stormcast is my my, my original. So, yeah. Um, this is, it feels like a, it's going to be competitive army. Yeah. Some uh, welcome and, changes. Yes. Yeah, and in multiple ways to be competitive. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And I might even add some welcome changes and some um, screened for nerfs. Yes. You know, uh, and, and nerf is a tough word to use there, but adjustments, I think, is a more fair uh, description of it i think if i had to give it an initial rating off the get off the get-go and kind of hearing and watching the practice games we've done i would say optimistically like an a minus you know i don't see them being in that 60 plus percent win category uh, yeah. win percentage there however i don't think that they've lost yes. you know i think realistically a b plus I, I i rate them a little higher than where i do zeech right now um but i think they're they're looking really good i think you're gonna see armies spam or you know i say spam but use a lot of the stone guard um the the bulls are coming in force you want to check out the cart <laughs> yeah right exactly <laughs> I, I bought i bought some this morning yeah uh, uh so yeah those are looking really good um i love the freedom that these books are offering now so that you don't have to be locked into command traits and artifacts that's so nice. yeah and then um i welcome the uh the passing of lambda light you know i've accepted it um i know i know you still are working through that and everyone grieves yeah, in their yeah. own way but <laughs> but i'm throwing a party so everyone's invited <laughs> uh, to the party right. uh yeah so i think that you know overall um well, I, I, i'm glad that uh leaves me the first prince last their stuff after yeah <laughs> yeah me too honestly <laughs> uh it's a pretty army that i'll never see the light again. <laughs> i want to tell the story he got the same guy who painted up my 
uh, uh, Lumineth army, Noah, the paint smithy, uh, Noah, the paint smithy, he commissioned a Legion of the First Prince army. Yeah, all and, custom paint and job. It's beautiful. Yeah. And then that, uh, that battle scroll came through. <laughs> yeah, like, they were like, Balakor <laughs> doesn't pass wounds anymore. <laughs> and uh, Kairos doesn't change that dice anymore. Like, yeah, well, yeah, I don't know. Beautiful and, yeah, and we already know the Corn Demon Prince is, is not long for this world. Right. So that this niche book is leaves Legion dead on. That so in let's the water. battle report with them. We'll okay. Luminous versus. Okay. Yeah, go. sure. That'll be fun. <laughs> um, also, uh, uh, again, I know I mentioned it earlier in the video. Please like, comment, subscribe. Let us know what stuff we missed. Let us know your favorite things you want to see. We are going to work to get a couple of um, starter lists going. Uh, we're going to put those in the comments. So uh, just a couple of jumping off points for you. Um, but yeah, hopefully you guys like this um, kind of discussion form uh, book review content. Mm -hmm. We're planning to, to do more. Uh, so definitely be on the lookout for suns and ogres here in the near future. Definitely. Yeah. And then um, that's it. Yeah. Sure. Uh, hope this you guys is, enjoy. Yeah. I hope you like this uh, new type of content. You know, we were only ones. We're not going to lose our identity. We're just, mm -hmm. we're going forward. Uh, you know, Mason's a great guy. He's a really competitive player, but he also is like knowledgeable about the game and knows how to, he can turn off the competitive switch. Yeah. And so, yeah, he knows what he's talking about. Yep. He did, when, when, did you, when did you win in GT? Like a week ago? Yeah, a couple weeks ago, I think. We got another one coming up. You know, yeah. that one? Yeah, I, probably. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for tuning in. Uh.